Beth didn't mention it, but she's going to be throwing a pretty cool conference in Las Vegas in the new year called Mix 07. Yay! You have to check it out. It's not online. Yeah. Come to Dork. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> go, to the, go to the first slide. Go to the first slide. Now please welcome Buster McLeod. Ah! Hey, I'm Buster McLeod. I work at the Robot Co-op. Um, built sites like 43 Things. And I recently started a new company called McLeod Residence, which is an art gallery and a bar. It's going to open in Belltown. It's going to sort of mix art and technology like Shelly was talking about earlier. And uh, my talk today is going to be, be about how to use technology to get what you want. It's going to be sort of a, a s divergence from the most of the more, of the more techie talks. It's more of a motivational speech because I've been reading a lot of self-help books and figure I got to apply it somehow. Okay. Uh, all right. So here's a statement for you. Can it? You can't always get what you want. Um, is that true or false? A lot of people think that, I mean, it's common wisdom and also song lyrics that you want something and you can't have it. Um, is it but I'm going to sort of make it a little bit more complicated by throwing in some math. So I created a math of getting things where you have desire dollars and difficulty costs. So if you have enough desire to get something to overcome the cost of the difficulty of getting it, you can have it. The hard part is knowing how much desire you have and how difficult it is to get something. So here are a few simple examples of things that you might want and, think, and how hard they are to get. Um, so <laughs> and I think it explains why we eat a lot of candy and don't get enough sleep. Um, but you get the point. So basically, if you can determine some things are more difficult on the other hand, to be loved and respected for who you are, I mean, we all want that quite a bit, don't we? But how hard is it to get and what's the path and how, where, where do we go and how exactly do we do it? And being healthy is very straightforward. But a lot of us don't want it as much as, as, the, as the cost. And so I call this the circular motivation loop. You want things, but you can't really affect how much you want things, right? You want to do something, you can't change that. It's very difficult to change. All you can do is want to want it more. And so I think there's a few loopholes people fall into. The one most obvious one is that they want to want to do something, like exercise. They want to want to be healthy. So they get a gym membership, they buy running shoes, you know, you buy the personal fitness center, but you never actually exercise. And you end up being lost like Moses in the desert. You just you don't actually attain your goal. Another way is by linking your desires, by putting something you want behind something you don't want and hoping that you have to go through it in order to get the thing you want. So saying every three hours, like they have a candy bar um, until you find out that you can just go straight to the candy bar. <laughs> And misplaced desires are sort of things like where you pour like the desire to be loved into exercising or work or alcohol or whatever it is, and you end up being a drunk or workaholic, you know, very healthy person, but your heart is so broken. I, what I think is that there's a secret ingredient. There's one thing that people want that you can transfer to other things that you want. And I think technology is going to help us sort of learn how to do that. Um, and it's not love. Like, you can't really see that. It's always the secret ingredient. It's the desire to be respected, to be who you say you are, and to have a good reputation. That's, a, that's something that we all want quite a bit. And we can transfer that by staking a reputation on things. We can add that to, for example, the desire to run a half marathon. I don't want to run a half marathon very much, but if I tell everyone I'm going to do it, suddenly my reputation is at stake and I can start training and doing, working a lot harder at doing it, um, even though I didn't want to do it more in the, in the beginning. So I think this is where the internet comes in. You can start, you can use the internet as a way to broadcast yourself, broadcast and set higher goals for yourself than you think you can achieve. Stretch yourself, like posting your goal on 43 things, putting the event on upcoming, emailing all your friends, um, and you can see that you might only want to run the half marathon this much, but because you do want to keep a good reputation, it sort of pushes you all the way to the end, and you don't want to, want to be a jerk. And in the end, I did run a half marathon based on this, this theory. Um, and, uh, but in the end, you, get, you complete the goal. Not only that, but you also have proven yourself. You've, you've proven yourself not only to yourself, but to other people. You can use that reputation to go on to the next bigger thing. For example, like starting a bar or art gallery. And you... <laughs> See, it's, it's all, it all makes sense. Okay, so here's the two strategies for telling you who you are, for telling people who you are. You think you're this kind of person. A lot of people underpromise, underpromise, underdeliver. It's very common wisdom. They say, "This is what I can do." I say that people should say, "I'm this person," and you'll rise to the higher occasion. So it sort of breaks out of the motivation loop. You stake your reputation. You do something bigger. You, you realize you can do that. 
you have more motivation and you can continue to do that on bigger and bigger things. And uh, th that's something that I think is inherent in, it's a thinker to Web 2.0. Yes, totally. <laughs> it's bringing people together, rising, like, rising up to newer And it's really the, the software in your head that gets engaged by using the technology on the screen. I mean, gadgets are great and everything, but they're not really that important unless they affect your life and change and make you a better person. And so anyway, thanks. That's my talk. Um, check out 43 Things. This is a great site for doing that kind of thing. Um, and learn more about the cloud residence. It's going to be a space very similar to this sort of uh, in Belltown. So thanks a lot.